Hello and welcome to another screencast. This time we are going to be discussing the long-term effects on the respiratory system um, with regards to exercise. So what happens after six to eight weeks worth of training to your respiratory system? So basic knowledge really in the fact that the effect of training on our respiratory system, so our lungs, um, alveoli, etc., inspiration, expiration, RCC, is that it would increase the efficiency of transporting oxygen to our muscles during exercise if we do six to eight weeks and further of exercise. So, pretty straightforward, really. Now, what happens in particular though is what the examiner will ask you and in particular reference to 10 mark answer questions you will need to know what happens to these four key areas that I'm about to explain. It's quite complex so please feel free to go back over it and over it again to make good notes. So the first area we need to talk about is the respiratory structure. So those sort of things are the things you labelled in terms of your diagram of the respiratory system. So immediate benefit of long term, so remember long term is six to eight weeks, not immediate, which is sort of as soon as you do exercising, is that you get an increased number of alveoli. And logically speaking, what that does is increases your surface area for diffusion. So we've got a bigger area to um, transfer oxygen in and out of the body, as well as carbon dioxide. Added to this, you get an increased elasticity of the lungs, alveoli and pleura. Remember, the pleura is that sort of membrane around your lungs. And they become more elastic because you're breathing more frequently during exercise. And the final thing that happens is that you get a further longevity of the respiratory structure efficiency. So that means we can go for longer during exercise and work more efficiently with the structure that, that that presently is, so the lungs, the alveoli, breathing in, breathing out, trachea, etc. The whole structure and function of the, of the respiratory system works much more efficiently and can, can go for much longer periods working at that efficient level. The second area is in the actual breathing mechanics, so we're talking about inspiration, expiration. So with long-term exercise, again, six to eight weeks worth of exercise, we get an increased efficiency rate of your respiratory muscles. And what that does, it reduces the oxygen costs of those respiratory muscles. Now, if you think the respiratory muscles actually need oxygen, they're like any other muscle, to move, but after a long period of exercise, the body learns to reduce the amount of oxygen that those muscles require, and therefore it can work very efficiently at a lower level of rate, which in turn reduces fatigue when you're actually exercising. Those muscles also increase in strength, power and endurance. So if you think they're like any other muscle, uh, we're talking about hypertrophy. So they'll get bigger, they'll get stronger. Um, so we're talking about internal intercostals, external intercostals, sternocleidomastoid, sclanes, pectoralis minor, and the rectus abdominis and the obliques. And all of those muscles get lots, lots, um, uh, increase in strength, they gain hypertrophy, they get bigger, they get more efficient. The third aspect you need to think about is the respiratory volumes. So there are three to consider here. The first one obviously is tidal volume and as we know from doing our own exercise in the classroom, tidal volume increases with maximal exercise. Remember maximal exercise is working to your utmost uh, ability. Coupled with that, is you start to get your respiratory frequency, so that's your, your breaths. Remember we put our hand in front of our mouth and we counted up breaths. Well that actually starts to decrease at rest the, the more fitter you, the fitter you get. So as we do long periods of exercise we get a decreasing resting breathing rate. But if then we say we were doing maximal work such as sprinting, 
the body will increase the amount of times we can breathe in and breathe out and therefore your ability to get in oxygen and to remove carbon dioxide becomes far more efficient during maximal work. And lastly, your VE, so minute ventilation, remember we get that by multiplying tidal volume by your respiratory frequency. Now your minute ventilation increases to 150 litres per minute from 120 litres per minute. So that volume actually increases. The final area we need to think about is diffusion, of course. And with long-term exercise, again, six to eight weeks worth of exercise, diffusion doesn't actually change during rest or sub-maximal exercise, which means if I go for a jog in the park, I'm not really pushing my body over sort of 85% intensity, things won't change that much in terms of diffusion rate. However, if we look at maximal activity, so if I was sprinting sort of 85 uh, to 95% intensity, uh, you get an increase in pulmonary diffusion. And the other thing that happens during maximal activity is you get an increase in VO2 difference, so volume oxygen difference during maximal activity. So in a nutshell, you get these performance benefits if we continue prolonged exercise for six to eight weeks on our respiratory system. Your aerobic performance during maximal, remember sprinting, 85% plus activity is increased or prolonged. That means I can go for longer during working harder using my respiratory system because my body can intake oxygen far more efficiently and get rid of carbon dioxide. There is a massive effect on performance of aerobic activities simply because all of those things we mentioned will delay the anaerobic threshold. So in a nutshell there, again, it will delay how quickly you get tired, delays fatigue. Other things that uh, the long-term effects of exercise will do is that it will reduce the effort of sub-maximal work and therefore increases the duration of performance. Now remember, sub-maximal work is jogging. If I was then to go for a jog after six to eight weeks, compared to say week one, I can jog for longer. Increases the duration of performance. And finally, of course, and, and you guys should know this anyway, an efficient respiratory system encourages a balanced, active, healthy lifestyle. Because if, if I can breathe easier in my general everyday life and my um, respiratory system is working far more efficiently, then that leads to a much more healthier lifestyle for myself. Okay, again, feel free to go back over the slides, write some decent notes for this because you're going to need it, because we're going to talk 10 markers with this, and any questions, please ask me within the lesson. Thanks, folks.